at the time when the first time series have been collected that are used in our study, I was actually a little boy, but already fascinated by nature. During high school, um, it became, it became increase, increasingly aware that I would like to become an ecologist. When studying ecology, I was um, fascinated by freshwater ecosystems because they actually inhabit a large number of very different species at quite small spatial scale. And they also provide essential ecosystem services to all of us, including drinking water, food and energy. However, freshwater biodiversity losses have been higher compared to marine and terrestrial ecosystems. And this is because humans have impacted freshwater ecosystems severely, for example, by discharging wastewater or nutrients or pesticides, and also by heavily physically altering rivers by channelizing them or fixing lake shores. We addressed some of these impacts by relating them to four out of these nine planetary boundary components, which are climate change, biosphere integrity, land system change, and freshwater change. So, the background of our study is that the, and this is something that we heard already today from Johan, um, that there was a great acceleration in impacts after World War II, and this was also true for freshwater biodiversity and freshwater ecosystems. So in the upper part of this figure here, um, you see some, some examples of, of um, stressors. So for example, in 1980, there was a peak in acidification resulting in acidified rivers. Uh, a little later, there was a peak in, in nitrogen and, and phosphorus fertilizers, and later uh, on this time scale, there were more and more all-time records with regard to temperature. You know all that. On the, <clears throat> the lower part of this figure, you see some mitigation measures, so some uh, regulations that have been enacted. So, for example, in response to acidification, there was the United Nations sulfur protocols that have been enacted in 1979 to make our air cleaner and by that reducing the acidification effect. Or the other example is the Urban Wastewater Treatment Directive. So more wastewater treatment plants have been built up and those that, ha that existed have been improved. So a lot of things have happened over the past decades and this is uh, the background, so to say, to, uh, of our study, and we were addressing two major questions. So how have actually freshwater invertebrate communities changed over these past decades in streams and rivers in Europe? And the second question is, what are the environmental factors that have driven these changes? Um, to answer these questions, we have built up a quite comprehensive co-author team, so overall 96 co-authors, and altogether we were able to compile an impressive data set of 1,816 inver river invertebrate time series across 22 European countries. This is one uh, of our results that I'm showing here. So the, the mean annual change in biodiversity over the 53 years. And here we are specifically looking at taxon richness in a simplified way. This is the number of species that we have found. And you can see here on the x-axis indicated in the red color all those um, time series that have shown a decline in, in species richness over time and indicated in, by the blue color more on the right hand of this graph um, all those sites that have um, shown an increase in biodiversity. The overall average is 0.73% per year. So this accumulated over these 53 years to almost 50% increase in the number of species that we have found. So, I mean, if you have the means, that is always quite important and interesting, but you still don't know what has happened over these decades. 
So was it a, um, a continuous increase or was it more fluctuating? And this is why we were asking also the questions, what do trajectories of biodiversity change look like? And here another example from our results. So we were able to reconstruct the trajectory starting from the early 1990s. And you can see here again, relating to taxon richness, so the annual change in the number of species. We have a quite constant increase by 1% in the 1990s, and it is more or less continuing throughout the 2000s. And this is a clear indication that past conservation actions have paid off. So there was a continuous, significant increase in species richness. So the establishment of wastewater treatment plants, the sulfur protocol, and so on, have really made a difference. However, we observed that after 2010, these increases leveled off. And they leveled off uh, not because everything has fully recovered, Actually, a lot of communities have not recovered yet, so this is a clear call for further actions which are urgently needed to allow a full recovery of our ecosystems. To answer our second question, we were addre addressing a broad range of drivers, and here are just four examples. Temperature increase, the number of dams, urban area and cropland area in the catchments. And indicated by the red color, you can clearly see there is an invert relationship between the increase in temperature and then the decline in biodiversity. If you get more dams over time, then you get less species over time. Same, more urban area, more cropland um, area, less species over time. So these are four important drivers of, or negative factors um, influencing a freshwater biodiversity. So what are our future steps and impact? So first of all, we would like to expand our um, collaboration network and by this filling in some spatial gaps that we still have in some parts of Southern Europe and Eastern Europe. And also we try to address further potential stresses by bringing in two more elements of the planetary boundary concept, specifically biogeochemical flows including nutrient pollutions, novel entities such as microplastics, novel chemicals, and uh, also novel pesticides. You can also quite nicely link our research to politics, society, and economics. So I think our comprehensive data set allows for testing the coming Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework, that is, asking for protecting 30% of the land and marine surface by 2030. So we could actually test with our data set how existing conservation areas have contributed to the recovery of stream invertebrates. We can also inform the EU Water Framework Directive by providing recommendations on the sampling frequency, the protocols, and things like that. And further, um, and this needs to be updated, so it's um, um, now the, the um, enacted nature restoration law. Um, there we will be able to identify long-term responses of restoration actions. You all know a lot of restoration actions have been implemented over the past decades, so at the same time period where our time series run. And finally, we would like to involve more stakeholders and uh, citizen scientists in our research. So I hope I was able to provide you not only some first insights into our study, but, uh, but also some, some first impressions about the complexity, the threat, but also the beauty of freshwater ecosystems. And my hope is that we could actually change the picture that is more looking like this, so having these channelized, straightened rivers, and go into a brighter future where the streams may look a little bit more like this. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thank you.